Welcome to a presentation on RS links from the PLC Professor. This is going to be a catch-all presentation for all but the experts. We've got new stuff, old stuff, and everything in between. We're going to do this in 12 to 20 minute segments, and this is part one. RS links has been a staple since the beginning. It is the most misaligned or maligned application in the Rockwell software stable. That's because you don't configure it very often. You might configure a couple drivers and you use them until you get a new laptop or a new uh, workstation and then you have to configure them all over again in the meantime you've forgotten how to configure them. So there's nothing really wrong with RS links. It's just a lack of time spent configuring it and it can crash on occasion. Uh, keep in mind that this is an application, it's an API, and it fits between Rockwell software and many other things, and the many other things out there aren't always perfectly connected. RS links and the three drivers. And the three drivers could be RS-232, DH+, and DH-45. These were the main drivers several years ago. We um, have Ethernet IP now, ControlNet, DeviceNet, we have a lot of other drivers. And this is a bedtime story for all PLC programmers. Who was it that said RS Lynx is a bear? Typically, people have more trouble with RS Lynx than any other Rockwell software application, but there's nothing wrong with Lynx. So what is Lynx? You could say it's what's between here and there, between software and hardware. In the industrial controls world, specifically that of controllers, you have the controllers and you have the development software. One is a piece of electronic hardware with RAM that receives and stores the program in the database and the other is an application that is nested inside of an operating system on a computer and you need to connect them with a data link. The data link is comprised of two components and they are not plug and play. You need a cable to electrically connect the two electronic devices and you need a driver on one end or the other of the cable. The cable is really a connector stretcher you know, if you actually give it some deep thought, that provides conductors to connect connectors. Picture in your mind a connector on each device. And we'll make it RJ45s. You recognize these, DH45, Ethernet. These are most commonly recognized today, though, as Ethernet connectors. They are not ports. If we see four of these on a device, we might say there's four Ethernet ports, but they themselves are not ports, they're just connectors. And they extend the conductors from the chipset out to where you plug the cable in. Picture a cable connecting the two connectors, and no matter how long the cable is, the connectors and cable are just conductors connecting the chipset in the PLC to the chipset in the controller. Now this brings us to the other component. The cable is really the simple part, but sometimes the most frustrating finding the right cable. That is the driver. Now I have to confess that I uh, I made up this graphic that says printer who. There is no such thing as printer who. But you do recognize the collection if you have ever worked on a computer that, ha that is connected to a network and has access to multiple printers. Probably the best example we could use is printing documents. That is, if everything goes as planned, the printed document should look the same regardless of the printer that you have printed it on, save the quality of the paper and the ink and some printers are faster, some are slower. They should all support the fonts that you selected within the word processor that you generated your document in. RS Who then is our printer, well, um, printer Who, which we're comparing to RS Who, 
then is our printer driver manager. You cannot print to a Canon IR5 or an Epson stylus unless you have a driver installed on your system for that specific model of printer. The driver is what manipulates the Word document into a format that the printers can work with. And every printer is different in some way. So printer who manages the drivers between the operating system and the hardware devices that you send the information to. Enter RS Links and RS Who. RS Links is a driver manager for the drivers provided by Rockwell Software and Allen Bradley. And RS Who is a separate application that allows you to browse the drivers. So RS Links and RS Who are not the same thing. RS Who operates inside of RS Links and it's a separate application. In the case of Rockwell software drivers, you can rename them anything you want as seen by the frivolous nature of the names seen here. These drivers interface the software on your PC through the cable to various models of Rockwell automation hardware. The newer operating systems have a friendly GUI, graphical user interface, for the devices that are connected to your computer. If you're using Windows 7, you will recognize this screen. And just as you can right-click on any of the drivers for your devices and printers, you can also right-click on the drivers in RS Links, RS Who. Well, now that you know what RS Links is, a driver manager, how does it fit in with Rockwell Automation or Allen Bradley as some of us think of it? Okay, so let's take a look at the world of RS Links Classic. This is an old graphic, uh, but it'll still work for us. And there is a lot more here than we're going to discuss. We're not going to talk about OPC servers, dynamic data exchange servers. We're not going to talk about application protocol interfaces other than to say that's where Lynx fits as an API. If you are familiar with the seven layer salad of communications, the OSI model, then you recognize the term API and you know where our Lynx fits in. There is one major structural flaw in this diagram and that is the network category. It should be placed between the network device and any external hardware. We show it as a separate category. If you scan down through the list in these four categories, you will recognize all or most of the identifications. Another category device is missing from this older graphic is network I.O. And you will see this as you configure the drivers and browse the network. You will see all the addressable I.O. interfaces, none of which are listed here. They would fit into the hardware category this would include servo drives, variable frequency drives, and network bridge cards that bridge between two incompatible networks, such as the ENBT or the CNB or the device net bridge card, etc. Another omission from these groups is RS Who. You don't see that application here. It is a separate application that functions with RS Links to browse the driven communication links. It would be found in the software category. This is only a partial list of software applications from Rockwell Software, not to mention many other manufacturers that purchase the right to use RS Lynx drivers with their hardware and software. So if you look down through this list, you see some familiar folks, RS View 32, that would now be Factory Talk View. Uh, RS View Studio, Factory Talk View Studio, RS Logix 5, 500, 5000. Of course, RS Logix 500 also programs Slick 500 and MicroLogix family. RS Logix 5000 programs Compact Logix, Control Logix, Soft Logix, Drive Logix. And then uh, Rockwell Software SQL, uh, it's database, RS Trend. Panel Builder 32, that's an older uh, panel view development software. Not the oldest, it is 32-bit. There was a 16-bit before that. So you see that the Rockwell software, software packages 
they basically are what uh, RSLynx was intended to interface to. And looking at a list of hardware, the few applications here are just enough to illustrate um, the nature. That's not definitely not all the hardware. Micrologix 1000, 1100, 1200, you see 1400's not there. So there's 1000, 1100, 1200, 1400, and 1500. Naturally, the 1000 came first, then the 1200, then the 1500. Then they went back and slipped in the 1100, which has online programming and ethernet, and then they slipped in a 1400 in between the 12 and the 1500 size-wise. Again, online programming and Ethernet. And then, of course, Slick 500, that's a fairly old product. By comparison, it's older than the Micrologix. And then even older than that is PLC 2, 3, and 5. There was also a PLC 4, but we don't list it here. There was a PLC 250, which most of you have probably never seen one. And then, of course, Control Logix and Compact Logix. There was something called Flex Logix. Uh, there was nothing wrong with it, but it was a footprint that wasn't very popular. Panel view, Versa view, SoftLogix 5800. So that would be in the ha hardware category. And then network-wise, uh, these are not the only protocols available, but they do represent the basics of Netlinks. Normally when we say Netlinks, we think Ethernet IP, Device Net, and Control Net. And there is a difference between Ethernet IP and Ethernet. Ethernet IP is Ethernet Industrial Protocol and it uses a combination of UDT and, and TCP in that layer of the seven layer salad. Um, so ether, there's Ethernet Devices driver, then there's an Ethernet IP driver. And then of course uh, Data Highway Plus, that's probably the, mm, not really the oldest of the bunch, but for a network it's the oldest of the bunch here. Uh, the DF1 serial goes back quite a ways, Data Highway 45, and then of course Device Net and Control Net. And there are some other networks now that uh, Rockwell Software works with. And then of course, here's a list of some um, applications that you can interface to the hardware using DDE and OPC. Object Link Embedding for Process Control Dynamic Data Exchange. You can create topics in Excel and you can actively populate a field or a cell in Excel with data right from any of these controllers. But there's just enough here, Excel, Access, Lotus 1, 2, 3, etc, etc, to give you an idea of what is actually in that category. Now if we take a single application here, RSLogix 500, I pick on that because that's everybody that's using Allen Bradley's probably worked with or is using RSLogix 500. And I picked a Slick 500. Um, however, because Slick 500 comes in several flavors, you can use um, RS-232 DF1 driver. Uh, you can use DH45. So the Slick 500 comes in something called a 501, 502, 503, 504, and 505. The 501 and 2 are pretty much obsolete. The 503 is DH485, the 504 is DH+, and the 505, which is the most popular, is Ethernet. So you've got RSLogix 500. It interfaces into the seven-layer OSI model through an API and down at the hardware level it's going to be a Ethernet NIC, it's going to be a PCMK, M PCM CIA type card that slides in the older processors or RS-232 9 pin sub D shell on the back, USB through an adapter, etc. And you can go through any of these four networks, Ethernet, DH+, DH45, DF1 serial to the Slick 500 through one of these network devices. Now, RS Links 
comes in several flavors. Uh, Light comes bundled with many development applications. It's not really free, it just comes bundled. Actually, it is free. You can go and download RS Links Light right off the website. As a matter of fact, I have a video on the YouTube channel that explains how to download uh, MicroStarter Lite, RS Lynx Lite, and RS500 Emulate and, and put together a simulator. And then Single Node allows one DDE OPC topic with one device. OEM allows many topics with many devices plus the C API interface. The SDK or Software Development Kit allows you to kind of make RS links your own. Professional, which is really cool, allows online data monitoring and ladder viewing. So actually RS links professional is a nice tool to have. You can actually go in and look at the logic without opening RS logics 500, but you can't edit it. You can only look at it. RS links gateway is everything that you see above plus connecting clients over TCP IP networks. So Gateway does everything, including letting you set up your PC or APC as a gateway to the network. Uh, I think this is going to be enough for part one. Uh, when we come back to part two, we'll talk about some of the helpful RS Lynx utilities like backup, restore, launch control panel, and the help files. So this is the end of RS Lynx Part 1. Be sure to look for Part 2 on YouTube. I never know how these are going to line up when you search on them, so I'm trying to be more careful about how I load them up and how I title them. Thank you.